Well, after the build-up of yesterday with uh, Dot here, we thought the weather might turn a bit, but it, we got away with it, I think so. We did. It sort of stopped raining, and then just when everything was finished, more or less, um, the heavens opened, so I think somebody was up there looking after us. Let's take you through some of the proceedings. Obviously, here they are. They're turning up now in, in the car. They've got greeted by all the dignitaries. I mean, quite a turnout there. They had to go greet the mayor and uh, all these people that have taken an effort in getting this thing organised today. Um, yes, we put a lot of work into it because it was our tribute, well, an island tribute to Robin Gibb, and of course they're our famous favourite sons, and um, we wanted to do the island proud. And whilst you know we didn't have the grandeur of the Royal Hall or anything, we had a semi-detached house in 50 St Catherine's Drive, which when I went to school was considered quite posh. So, um, and I was talking to Dwina on the way in, and she said that um, Barbara Gibb. Um, considered St Catherine's Drive one of her favourite houses on the Isle of Man because it was very modern at the time, mm. you know, and they'd lived above Maley's, they'd lived at Spring Valley, and, of course, when they moved here, it was quite modern. And so um, to come back here with the family, and um, I think um, it was a very emotional occasion as um, we witnessed yeah. when Dwina unfurled the stamp on the front of the house. Well, yeah, looking at it, we can see a picture there, quite over overcome by the whole thing. Absolutely, and of course RJ did his speech about this famous wall that Robin mm. always dreamt of when he was a child, but he felt secure with this wall, and it turns out when he came back to visit St Catherine's Drive, he realised it was the wall of the school, and that was a very emotional moment for me because, um, you know, he really did have the island in his heart. Mm. Well, I caught a word with him inside the house itself. It was, it was very noisy, but I, th I think we can make it out what they were saying. There was music playing and a lot, lot of people wanting to talk to him, but uh, here's what they had to say. Oh, it was just seeing this, this big picture of Robin all of a sudden. I just got really emotional. You know, it was really hard. Even, even I choked up in the middle <laughs> yeah. of the uh, middle yes. of mine, yeah. Because yeah. we have so many memories of coming back here. And as I said, you know, he always wanted to show us where he had his first bee sting, where he had his first ice cream, where he had his first walk, run, you know, everything. It was just, and he would go to all the different places and show us, you know, so. His first bee sting was in Fring, Spring Valley. <laughs> his first ice cream was on Snaefell Road. <laughs> so, yeah. And then he'd sit in front of the... Um, the house, you know, and, and we took photographs of every place that he'd well, been to. They were actually back on the island when they got the call from Stigma, weren't they? For, that's that's yeah, right. That's right. They were on the island, and um, Barry was living in Glen Crutchery Road, I think, at the time. In fact, um, the grandparents are buried at the churchyard there, Ernest and Nora Pass. They used to have a boarding house in, in Douglas. But um, the, Barry got the call from Robert Stigwood to say that, um, that they wanted to bring out, uh, uh, they wanted the brothers to do the music for a new film. He had an idea of this new film called um, tribal rights, tribal of, a rights <laughs> of a Saturday Night, yeah. <laughs> which and they had a song that they they had already written called Night Fever, so they ended up calling it Saturday Night Fever. Well, they'd written them in the in a, a small cottage in France, you know, with just cows surrounded. So cows were the first ones to hear, you know, Night Fever and, yes. and <laughs> staying alive. Yes. And of course, uh, you know, there was no advertising for uh, for Night Fever. It was just by word of mouth. It was a sensation, absolute yes. uh, anomaly. Yes, it was fantastic. But, uh, but they heard that they, they heard that they had the first phone call here. Yes, the, yes. a lot of firsts here. <laughs> a lot of firsts here. <laughs> Well, a great success, and uh, is that staying outside the big tribute uh, poster there for the stars? Uh, we'll stay, uh, keep it out today, because there may be people, you know, just mm. wanting to see what went on. And um, we also had the Balakamine Choir, yeah. who... Uh, Let's play that in, look at this. Absolutely fantastic. You know, we couldn't have co choreographed better. Yeah. It was just, you know, the last night of the proms, and it was brilliant. And... Um, the, you know, I, I just think it's wonderful that Robin Gibb, and I'm sure if he was here today, he'd have been so proud of the choir singing his music. And it's just um, the whole thing was a wonderful, emotional, happy occasion. And I hope that our tribute to Robin Gibb um, has been 
heartfelt because we certainly worked hard to make sure that we gave him a wonderful accolade that he deserves. Well, we'll leave you with Balkavin School Choir playing out uh, and a, and a, a great day. A great day for us all. That love belongs.